This is an Eagles Landing production. You will not leave in haste. Isaiah, the 52nd chapter in the 12th verse. I do not believe we have even begun to understand the wonderful power there is in being still. We're in such a hurry, always doing, that we're in danger of not allowing God the opportunity to work. You may be sure that God will never say to us, stand still, sit still, or be still, unless he is going to do something. This is our problem regarding the Christian life. We want to do something to be Christians instead of allowing him to work in us. Think of how you stand still when your picture is being taken as the photographer captures your likeness on film. God has one eternal purpose for us that we should be conformed to the image of his son. But in order for that to happen, we must stand still. We hear so much today about being active, but maybe we need to learn what it means to be quiet. Sit still, my children. Just sit calmly still. Nor deem these days, these waiting days, as ill. The one who loves you best, who plans your way, has not forgotten your great need today. And if he waits, it's sure he waits to prove to you his tender child, his heart's deep love. Sit still, my children. Just sit calmly still. You greatly long to know your dear Lord's will, while anxious thoughts would almost steal their way. Coordinately within because of his delay. Persuade yourself in simple faith to rest. That he who knows and love will do the very best. Sit still, my children. Sit calmly still nor move one step, nor even one until his way has opened. Then, ah, then how sweet, how glad your heart, and then how swift your feet. Your inner being then, ah, then how strong, and waiting days, not counted them too long. Sit still, my children, just calmly still. What higher service could you for him feel? It's hard, yes, but the choicest things must cost. For lack of losing all, much is lost. It's hard. It's true. But then he gives you grace to count the hardest spot 
the sweetest place. I'm your host, Pastor Will. Welcome to In the Moment. WLAS 95.3 and Wilfred S. Stockton Ministries welcomes you to In the Moment with your host, Pastor Will. You are now being presented an invitation of inspiration, motivation, education, and salvation. There are two types of people who will tell you that you can't make a difference in this world. Those who are afraid to try and those who are afraid you will succeed. Opportunities of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. 
Welcome to In The Moment. In the 100% moment. love, 100% skill, 100% concentrated power of will, 100% pleasure, 100% pain, 100% reason why you remember his name. Remember his name. Remember his name. Remember his name. shall be given if you abide in me and my words abide in you then you shall ask what you will and it shall be After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. But when they opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent of it. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titius Justus a worshiper of God. Crispus, the synagogue leader, and his entire household believed in the Lord. And many of the Corinthians who heard Paul believed and were baptized. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. While Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews of Corinth made a united attack on Paul and brought him to the place of judgment. This man, they charged, is persuading the people to worship God in ways contrary to the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Gallio said to them, If you Jews were making a complaint about some misdemeanor or serious crime, it would be reasonable for me to listen to you. But since it involves questions about words and names and your own law, settle the matter yourselves. I will not be a judge of such things. So he drove them off. Then the crowd there turned on Sosthenes, the synagogue leader, and beat him in front of the proconsul. And Gallio showed no concern whatsoever. Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the believers and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at Sencrae because of a vow he had taken. They arrived at Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to spend more time with them, he declined. But as he left, he promised, I will come back if it is God's will. Then he set sail from Ephesus. When he landed at Caesarea, he went up to Jerusalem and greeted the church and then went down to Antioch. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul set out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately 
though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. When Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, the believers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. When he arrived, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed. For he vigorously refuted the Jews in public debate, proving from the scriptures that Jesus was the Messiah. Oh my God, come on. He's the line of Judah. He rules, he reigns. Come on, let's give him praise and give him glory for who he is. Come on.
Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God, his holy mountain. Beautiful in its loftiness, the joy of the whole earth. Like the heights of Zaphon is Mount Zion, the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He has shown himself to be her fortress. When the kings joined forces, when they advanced together, they saw her and were astounded. They fled in terror. Trembling seized them there, pain like that of a woman in labor. You destroyed them like ships of Tarshish shattered by an east wind. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord Almighty, in the city of our God. God makes her secure forever. Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. Like your name, O God, your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with righteousness. Mount Zion rejoices. The villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments. Walk about Zion, go around her, count her towers, consider well her ramparts, view her citadels, that you may tell of them to the next generation. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. This is Willette Stalker Simon, and you are in the moment with your host, Pastor Will. Everything is possible for one who believes. Mark the ninth chapter in the 23rd verse. Prayer takes the people to the bank of faith and obtains the golden blessing. Be mindful how you pray. Pray. Make real business of it. Never let it be a dread formality. Some people pray a long time, but do not get what they're supposed to ask for because they do not plead the promise in a truthful, business-like way. If you were to go into a bank and stand in for an hour talking to the clerk and then come out again without your cash, what would be the good of that? Have you ever given God the chance to answer the prayer of faith? Don't let us lose our last chance of believing by waiting till the dawn has broken in today. If a radio's slim finger can pluck a melody from night and toss it over a continent or a sea, if the petaled white notes of a violin are blown across a mountain or a city's den. If songs like crimson roses are called from thin blue air, why should mere mortals wonder if God hears prayer? When all things can be accomplished by prayer, why not yield to the test? Why not pray on and through the moment? Don't you go nowhere, don't you go nowhere, come on, come on. Watch this, keep coming, here we go. The sun will shine, my heart 
Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all who live in this world, both low and high, rich and poor alike. My mouth will speak words of wisdom. The meditation of my heart will give you understanding. I will turn my ear to a proverb. With the harp, I will expound my riddle. Why should I fear when evil days come? When wicked deceivers surround me, those who trust in their wealth and boast of their great riches? No one can redeem the life of another or give to God a sufficient ransom. The ransom for a life is costly. No payment is ever enough so that someone should live on forever and not see decay. For all can see that the wise die, that the foolish and the senseless also perish, leaving their wealth to others. Their tombs will remain their houses forever, their dwellings for endless generations, though they had named lands after themselves. Human beings, despite their wealth, do not endure. They are like the beasts that perish. This is the fate of those who trust in themselves and of their followers who approve their saying. They are like sheep and are destined to die. Death would be their shepherd, but the upright will prevail over them in the morning. Their forms will decay in the grave, far from their princely mansions. But God will redeem me from the rim of the dead. He will surely take me to himself. Do not be overawed when others grow rich, when the splendor of their houses increases, for they will take nothing with them when they die. Their splendor will not descend with them. Though while they live, they count themselves blessed, and people praise you when you prosper. They will join those who have gone before them, who will never again see the light of life. Human beings who have wealth but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. This is Vivian Zenobia Stalker, and you are in the moment with your host, Pastor Will. He turned the sea into dry land. They pass through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. Psalm 66 and 6. It is a profound statement that through the waters, the very place where we might have expected nothing but trembling, terror, anguish, and dismay. The children of Israel stop to rejoice in him. How many of us can relate to this experience? Who of us right in the midst of our time of distress and sadness have been able to triumph and rejoice as the Israelites did? How close God is to us through his promises and how brightly those promises shine. Yet during times of prosperity, we lose sight of his brilliance in the way the sun at noon hides the stars from sight. His promises become more indiscernible. But when night falls, the deep dark night of sorrow, a host of stars begin to shine, bringing forth God's blessed constellations of hope and promises of comfort from his word. Just as Jacob experienced at Jabbok, it is only once the sun sets that the angel of the Lord comes, wrestles with us, and we can overcome. It was at night, at twilight, that Aaron lit the sanctuary lamps. And it is often during nights of trouble that the brightest lamps of believers are set ablaze. It was during a dark time of lowliness and exile that John had the glorious vision of his Redeemer. Many of us today have 
our Isles of Patmos, which produces the brightest memories of God enduring presence, uplifting grace and love in spite of solitude and sadness. How many travelers today still passing through their Red Sea and Jordan rivers of earthly affliction will be able to look back from eternity filled with memories of God's great goodness and say, we pass through the waters on foot. And yet, even in these dark experiences, with waves surging all around, we stopped and said, let us rejoice in him. There, I will give her back her vineyards and make the valley of a core a door of hope. There she will sing in the moment. Come on, stand on your feet for us. Everybody get on your feet today. How many of you serve a big God? How many of you serve a big God? Can I hear you shout in this place?
the mighty one, God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him, and around him a tempest rages. He summons the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me this consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for he is a God of justice. Listen, my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, Israel. I am God, your God. I bring no charges against you concerning your sacrifices or concerning your burnt offerings, which are ever before me. I have no need of a bull from your stall or of goats from your pens, for every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains, and the creatures of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine, and all that is in it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to recite my laws or take my covenant on your lips? You hate my instruction and cast my words behind you. When you see thieves, you join with them. You throw in your lot with adulterers. You use your mouth for evil and harness your tongue to deceit. You sit and testify against your brother and slander your own mother's son. When you did these things and I kept silent, you thought I was exactly like you. But I now arraign you and set my accusations before you. Consider this, you who forget God, or I will tear you to pieces with no one to rescue. Those who sacrifice thank offerings honor me, and to the blameless I will show my salvation. You are in the moment with my dad, Pastor Will. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I commit myself to walk in the word. Your word living in me produces your life in this world. I recognize that your word is integrity itself steadfast, sure, eternal, and I trust my life to its provisions. You have sent your word forth into my heart. I let it dwell in me richly in all wisdom. I meditate in it day and night so that I may diligently act on it the incorruptible seed, the living word, the word of truth is abiding in my spirit. That seed is growing mightily in me now, producing your nature, your life. It is my counsel, my shield, my buckler, my powerful weapon in battle. The word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It makes my way plain before me. Therefore, I do not stumble. For my steps are ordered in the word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit leads and guides me in all the truth. He gives me understanding, discernment, and comprehension so that I am preserved from the snares of the evil one. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I delight myself in you and your word. Because of that, you put your desires within my heart. I commit my way unto you and you bring it to pass. I am therefore confident that you are in work in me now both to will and to do all your good pleasure. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I exalt your word. I hold it in high esteem and give it first place. I make my schedule around your word. I make the word final authority to settle all questions that confront me. I choose to agree with the word of God and I choose to disagree with any thoughts, conditions, or circumstances contrary to your word. I boldly and confidently say that my heart is fixed and established on the solid foundation, the living word of God. These and all blessings we always pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you realize that you need Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior, or if you're not sure that he is, then if you would, just pray this simple prayer with me. Just say, Jesus I realize that all have sinned and come short of your glory. I also realize that the wages of sin is death, but your gift is eternal life. Lord, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I repent and turn away from my sin. Please, Lord, save my soul. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer with me, welcome to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You've been born again. You have received salvation. Heaven is your home, and you will live with God forever. Now, if you're not already there, ask God to lead you to a Bible-based church where you can study the Word of God, learn the Word of God, believe the Word of God, and live the Word of God that says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. God bless you.
come to us. We come alive.
start to think of what's in your heart. Thank you. 